And now let's summarize what we've learned about K. So K represents the vertical translation. Because when we varied the value of K, the parabola's moved up or down. Okay? So it moved vertically. So K represents the vertical translation. If K is greater than zero, so when k was positive 3 or positive 5, the parabola's moved up. So if k is greater than 0, the graph is translated k units up. When k was less than 0, the graph is translated k units down. So you want to be filling this information out on your placemat which you will be able to reference throughout this unit. So you want to be filling this out. The bottom left section, if we rotated this, it would be the bottom left section of your placemat. You want to be filling out that information. Okay. Now let's move on and determine what varying the value of h does um, to a parabola. Remember what our vertex form of our parabola looks like. It's y equals ax minus h squared plus k. Now we are going to be looking at h. How does varying h affect the parabola? We've already determined k. Now let's determine h. Not too far here. Good. Okay. So, once again, if you bring up your graphing calculator, if we put y equals x minus 1 squared into our graphing calculator, we'll turn it back on, leave y equals x squared in your graphing calculator, that way you can compare it um, to our new graph. So let's put, make sure you leave your brackets in, so bracket x minus 1 to the exponent of 2. If we don't have our brackets, the calculator will only square the 1. It won't know to square it won't know to square that whole function. So we want to be have the brackets in there, so it's bracket x minus 1 to the exponent 2. Okay? If we graph that, we will notice hmm, the problem moved one unit to the right. So let's do that here. So here's our original parabola. Let's find some sound effects for that. So if it goes to the right, let's use this one. Let's keep with the Mario theme. So move one to the right. You might have thought when you saw a negative value here, when you saw like x minus 1, you might have thought it would have moved to the left. Because usually left and down are paired together and right and up are paired together. But we'll find out um, in a minute as to why this happens. So let's then look at the graph of y equals x minus 3 squared. If we put that in our calculator, you would see that it moves 1 unit. Two units, three units to the right. So there's the graph of y equals x minus 3 squared. Also, if we then put y equals x plus 2 squared into our graphing calculator and graphed it, we would find that it moves two units to the left. One, two units to the left. And then at this point, you can probably see the trend. y equals x plus 3 squared is going to move three units to the left. One, two, Three. So those are all the graphs that you should have drawn on your investigation handout. At this point, take the time to fill out the rest of the cells about what the vertex is, the axis of symmetry, direction of opening, maximum or minimum values, and its relation to y equals x squared. So make sure you have all of that filled out. Now let's take a look at what we've learned about the properties of the h value. Okay, so h represents the horizontal translation. Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit confusing and tricky, but we'll work it out. So, if h is greater than 0, the graph is translated h units to the right. Now, you might be saying, hold on, Mr. Jensen. When we had x minus 5, it moved to the right. And isn't h a negative value in that instance? And 
what I would say is no. H is actually a positive value. If we look back at our graph of y equals x minus 1 squared, okay, the h value in this instance is actually just the 1, okay, because let's try and write this out a little, little clearer so it makes more sense. Okay, so we have y equals x minus h squared. If I have an h value greater than 0, so an h value of 1, let's say, if I plug in that 1 for h, that po if I plug in that positive 1 for h, so I get just get rid of the h, and I just plug in positive 1, it's going to appear like this. It's going to appear as 1 is being subtracted from x. And we discovered in our investigation that that moves it to the right. So that positive 1 value of h moves the parabola to the right. Now let's find out what happens if we have a negative value of h. Okay, let's put h back in here. Okay, so here's the general equation. If I replace h with a negative number, so just get rid of the h, I can move this so I have room for the rest of the brackets. So I'm just replacing h with negative 1. Okay, now you'll notice how it's going to appear. When we subtract a negative, that becomes addition. So it's going to appear like this. It's going to appear as addition when we input a negative h value. When we, we figure it out in our investigation, then when we have x plus 1 squared, it's going to move to the left. So that means when the h value is negative, right there, we can see that negative sign. When the h value that we plugged in is negative, it's going to move to the left. Okay, make sure you understand this. This is the trickiest part of vertex form. Oh, I'm going to write that better. So if you need clarification on this, please rewind the video and go through what I've just said again. And if you need further clarification, leave some comments, message me, and we can go over it again. Okay. So just to summarize what H does, H is the horizontal. You can remember that by, you know, H is the first letter in horizontal. If H is greater than zero, the graph moves H units to the right. But remember, it will appear as X minus three. But remember that H value is just the three. So if the H value is actually positive in that instance. If the H value is less than zero, the graph moves to the left. We know that x plus 2 moved to the left. The h value is actually negative 2 in this instance. Okay. Now, so you filled this out on your placemat. Now, the last one we have to consider is the a value. Okay. We've looked at, if we go back to our original equation of in vertex form, which is y equals a x minus h squared plus k. We know k is the vertical translation. H is the horizontal translation. Now, what do we think varying the value of A will do? Let's go and take a look and find out. Okay, so if we put on our graphing calculator, if we put in Y equals 2X squared, you would find out that the graph looks something like this. You will notice that it is narrower than the graph of Y equals X squared. That's interesting. So when we put y equals 4x squared into our graphing calculator, so the a value is now 4, it looks something like this, even narrower than y equals 2x squared. Now on our graphing calculator, if we put in y equals negative x squared, the parabola will look like this. It'll rotate like this. And its vertex will still be at the origin. So what we call that is a reflection in the x-axis. Let's move all these other graphs out of the way for a second. So we have the graph of y equals x squared. And this is the graph of y equals negative x squared. So the only difference between these two graphs is that y equals negative x squared has been reflected in the x-axis. You can think of that x-axis as the mirror. 
Okay, so reflecting the x-axis is the technical way of saying that the parabola is flipped upside down. Okay, let's put these ones back on. So when we have the graph of negative 2x squared, if we put that in our calculator, we find out that it is reflected in the x-axis, and it's also made narrower. Now, the technical term for being made narrower is called a vertical stretch. Okay? You can think of someone grabbing the two, um, the tops of the parabola here, and kind of pulling them up so that it makes the parabola narrower. So it's called a vertical stretch. Okay? So if we fill out, oh, let's move on. There's still more A values we have to consider. Okay, so make sure for these first four graphs, you have these sketched on your investigation, and you filled out all the accompanying cells about the vertex and axis of symmetry and so on. Okay, let's look at other A values. So when we had A values greater than 1 or less than negative 1, we saw that it stretched the parabola. Now let's look at when we have fractions of values between 0 and 1 or between 0 and negative 1, how that affects the parabola. How it's going to affect the parabola, if we use our graphing calculator and um, graph them, we will see that y equals 1 over 2x squared looks something like this. Okay, it looks wider than the graph of y equals x squared. And if we graphed y equals 1 over 8x squared, it would look even wider. Remember, 1 over 8 is a smaller number than 1 over 2. Okay, it's closer to 0. So the closer that fraction gets to 0, the wider this parabola is going to get. Now, and we remember what happens when the a value is actually negative. Oh, sorry, that should say y equals negative 1 over 2 x squared. Okay, good. Okay, so we're going to have the graph of y equals negative 1 over 2 x squared. We know it's going to be reflected in the x-axis because the a value is negative. How that's going to look? It's going to look just like 1 over 2 x squared, but it's going to be upside down. It's going to be reflected in the x-axis. I hope that looks close enough. And now y equals negative 1 over 4x squared. Also going to be reflected in the x-axis. But is going to be wider than negative 1 over 2x squared. Because 1 over 4 is closer to 0 than 1 over 2. Good. So there's our four parabolas for this section. Make sure you have those drawn on your investigation. And fill out those accompanying cells. So just pause the video at this point and complete those sections.